the numbering of because of numbering of tattvas it is called sankhya sankhya pura sankhyan the one who knows all the 25 tattvas meaning the one who knows prakruti prasankhyan api kusidasya sarvatha kusidasya kutsit kutsit means hatred kusidasya means kusha like a worth throwing he now gets a feeling that all this prakruti is worth throwing throwing meaning what not the nama rupa to be obliterated or they to be destroyed but the whole mastery on this prakruti is of no use he has a complete awareness that he can mold the prakruti the way he wants he can go through the stone he can jump up onto the sky he can stretch his finger and touch his tip of the finger to the moon i am not exaggerating it is written in the bhashyam the yogi has an ability to stretch his finger and touch directly the planet that he wants to touch that is possible so all these siddhis he can become a small bacteria he can be as light as the cotton he can fly flow he can go through the fire anything in the prakruti he is able to do because he has mastered the prakruti but now he has come to a stage where he feels that all this is useless aishwarya pratikusidata all these siddhis that he has initially he was surprised when he first saw the siddhi then he became neutral about it now he starts hating it in the sense he start thinking it as tyaj the mastery of the world is considered tyaj kathopanishad nachiketa said tava vivaha tamanrutya geete e dharmaraj take all this so called kingdom kingdom everything to you what it means is he is no more allured excited satisfied with the siddhis that he has the entire aishwarya which is called as aishwarya of ishwara ishwara aishwarya also he feels kusidasya when that happens that happens when on one hand the viveka khyati is there the ability to see the prakruti separate and the purusha separate which itself means atma jnana the atma jnana bliss is so great that everything else appears worth throwing when this state is reached the yogi is loving his atma jnana yogi is absolutely stuck to the atma jnana so he hates everything why i am saying this is there is still one step left there and what is that left he has thrown away all the aishwarya of the prakruti but he is a so called clinging to the atma or being happy or blissful about the atma gyan is also the last obstacle feeling completely distasteful towards the entire prakruti is the height of sampradnyat samadhi and it is called dharma megha samadhi dharma megha samadhi is a specific special word used by patanjali maharaj what does that word mean that word means a yogi who has reached the height of sampradnyat samadhi who has got viveka khyati that means the knowledge that i am atman and i am not this inner things or achetana vastu or prakruti such a person since he is not interested or kusidasya into anything including the aishwarya of siddhis 
वॉट एवर कम्स आउट ऑफ हिम इज धर्मा रिलीजन द ट्रुएस्ट नेचर ऑफ धर्मा द ट्रुएस्ट नेचर ऑफ धर्मा इज धिस योगी वॉट एवर ही डज वॉट एवर ही सेज वॉट एवर ही बिहेव इज धर्मा because he is in dharma megha samadhi the cloud of dharma showering only dharma upon the earth or the place where he is sitting not only that whatever he says will come true that is again a part of the siddhi whatever he does it is said his murmuring also will be religion dharma this dharma megha samadhi is the height of sampradnyat samadhi so we have this savitarka savichara sananda sasmita sasmita after sasmita the height of sampradnyat samadhi that means he is aware of the fact that he is knowledgeable see try to understand he is knowledgeable he is gnani the only problem is he knows he is gnani being gnani is one stage and being aware of gnana is another stage at this dharma mega samadhi he is aware that he is gnani in asampradnyat nirbij samadhi this awareness that he is a gnani is gone being knowledgeable being gnani being witness to atma gnana knowing that this is a chetan so that is chetan this is a chetan he is saying that means he is aware that this is a chetan in asampradnyat samadhi there is no awareness of distinguishing types pure awareness shuddha janiv shuddha awareness pure awareness pure awareness is not of something pure awareness is pure awareness this is prakruti that is a purusha is definitely kaivalya but there is a slight difference between viveka khyati and kaivalya they are absolutely next to each other so that fine distinguishing is what is being described now by patanjali maharaj prasankhyane api kusidasya sarvatha viveka khyati dharma megha samadhi the yogi who has reached at the height of sampradnyat samadhi when he feels absolutely uh, useless every achetana thing including his siddhis and his powers and his aishwarya he is supposed to be in dharma megha samadhi sarva bhav adhishtatrutva the mastery of everything that is there in the prakruti is seen as useless in this state but this is not that state in which knowledge itself of this kind is considered useless i am intelligent is one stage when i say i am intelligent i am intelligent of something now the stage next to this is i am intelligent but i am not aware that i am intelligent awareness of being gnani viveka khyati is kh khyati means to know i am not achetana vastu i am not prakruti i am not when i say i am aware that i am not 
this awareness when it is dissolved then he goes to the next stage however even in this stage all his klesha karma nivrutti is already happened tataha klesha karma nivrutti hi in dharma medha samadhi is kleshas and karmas are gone so there is no papa punya nothing this person will not be reborn for sure he has become mukt but dharma megha samadhi cannot destroy prarabdha samskar धर्म मेघ समाधि और द हाइट ऑफ संप्रज्ञात समाधि कैन नॉट डिस्ट्रॉय प्रारब्ध संस्कार अदरवाइज ही विल बी डेड इंस्टेंटली मोमेंट यू हैव आत्मज्ञान यू आर डेड व्हाय ऑल कर्मास आर गॉन व्हाट इज देयर टू सफर और व्हाट इज देयर टू एंजॉय बिकॉज भोगास आर गॉन इट डजंट हैपन सो बिकॉज प्रारब्ध संस्कार आर नॉट डिस्ट्रॉयड बाय धर्म मेघ समाधि सो ही कंटिन्यूज टू लीव and test the effects of prarabdha samskar but he is mukta he is completely moksha prapt yet he is in prarabdha the example given in the advaita vedanta for this is very good the potter's wheel when the potter is making the pot after he has finished making the pot he doesn't move the wheel but it keeps on moving because of the original speed for some more time exactly in the same manner the dharma megha samadhi yukta yogi even though he has been freed from the klesha sanskar and papa punyam and the rebirth etc still continues to live till the prarabdha karma ends so now we have a situation of a yogi sitting who has nothing to do with the prakruti he has already gone out of the prakruti because there is no klesha no avidya so he is mukta yet he has prarabdha imagine a analogy that a nishtik brahmachari is going to a brothel what will happen nothing will happen he is a nishtik brahmachari so he will just visit the brothel and come out similarly the yogi with dharma megha samadhi yukta and mukta will continue to enjoy the prarabdha in the sense let the prarabdha come and go it will not affect him any more it will not create samskaras it will not create likes and dislikes and stupidly and foolishly we sometimes do not know this there was an example given by jairam ji about gurudeva that while giving the lecture a pravachana there was a nail that went into his thigh or some or leg and it was bleeding but he continued talking about it and then later on people realized that he there is a blood there so we all said oh my god gurudeva see look how he can tolerate the pain we are all stupid there is no pain it is not titiksha he has gone beyond titiksha see we fail to understand the jeevan mukta's life the question is they look at that particular bleeding and the pain as if it has happened to somebody else these anecdotes which are coming from living saints are to be analyzed very deeply there is an anecdote about kabir maharaj that somebody saw there was a dog who came and bit the calf muscle of kabir maharaj and it was bleeding profusely and kabir maharaj was continuing to weave the carpet that he was weaving so the person said kabir maharaj it is bleeding profusely and his answer was वो पिंडरी जाने और कुत्ता जाने लेट दैट लेग नो इट एंड लेट द डॉग नो इट वॉट डज इट मीन सर इट मीन्स प्रारब्ध कर्म वशात 
it's still having the pain or the happiness or whatever but it doesn't make any difference to them because dagda bija bhava sarva karma klesha how is the situation of these people then tada sarva avarana mal apetasya gnanasya anantyat anantatvat neyam alpam in the horizon of a yogi of dharma megha samadhi the jivan mukta everything is full of consciousness so there is nothing much left to be known see we are constantly trying to know something early in the morning we rush to the newspaper why curiosity what is there what happened what happened in maharashtra the government got toppled what happened to this what happened to america what happened to ukraine war continuously we are not at all related to those issues in fact nobody comes and asks us anything about as advice but we do that because there is an inherent urge to know jignashya that jignasa of this particular yogi has ended in fact he is not interested in knowing uh, who i am where i am going from where i was born where i'll be later on born how this world is moving all these questions are already answered so because avaran and mal both are gone apetasya gnanasya anantatvat because the knowledge is everywhere now gneyam alpam to be known is very little mind well a yogi who is jivan mukta is all knowledgeable then why swami vivekananda could not talk about theory of relativity why einstein spoke about it because he must be knowing no why gurudeva did not come out with a new discovery and perhaps one been nominated for a nobel prize first of all there is no desire there is no desire and second prakruti is the interplay of gunas constantly playing with each other so there are so many hidden secrets in this prakruti the mankind will keep on discovering and keep on inventing for years to come it will not end see for last so many thousands of year new discoveries new inventions are happening something new is coming some 30 50 years back there was no digital world now there is digital world then they will go towards artificial intelligence or whatever you call then metaverse then there will be something more to that it will keep coming because interplay of gunas is a constantly evolving things there is no end to invention because prakruti is far superior to the man you we all are a part of prakruti how can we be bigger than the prakruti the father knows much more things than the child howsoever the child may try to discover so a yogi is all knowledgeable in the sense that he knows everything about the prakruti provided he wants to know vivekananda swami ji wanted to know about the sanskrit grammar so he took ashtadhyayi panini is ashtadhyayi and started reading and there were some aspects which were difficult to understand the pandit ji who was teaching him in gujarat he was little annoyed he said why can't you understand it now imagine the yogi who was in used to be in samadhi he could not understand it does that mean his knowledge was alpa no what he did he sat at one place concentrated on panini is ashtadhyayi and he mastered it meaning the ability to know everything in the world is inherent in them what is required is they should concentrate on that subject if they don't they will not come to know and they normally don't concentrate on everything because they know that even if i concentrate here they are all objects if you very carefully has studied the biography of swami ji in one of the instance swami ji was told about taoism and swami ji said i don't know our swami ji saying i don't know is very rare but he said that what this means 
that I don't know about it. But if you want to know just by concentration, not even by reading book, he would know Taoism. So like a firefly in the sky, in the Bhashyam it is written, like a firefly, khadyot, like a firefly in the sky, very little is left to be known by these yogis. Because Auran and Mala is gone, it's all Jnanam, Jnanam and Jnanam unknown. See, we need to understand two words very clearly. Enlightenment and knowledge are two different things. Knowledge is always about or of something. We are so much used to the knowledge about. He knows this. He knows that. I am knowledgeable about everything. Everything also means of. Enlightenment is not knowledge of. Only knowledge. Let us take a very crude analogy. I am eating Shrikhandam. So it's very nice, enjoyable Srikhandam. Okay. What will happen if I am Srikhandam? It's a crude analogy, but very relevant. If I am Srikhandam, why will I feel that I should eat myself? What you are, you can't be enjoying that. This body I enjoy, I try to beautify it because it's not mine. That what is not mine is enjoyable. But me, I'm enjoying me, I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying me. Doesn't happen because I am enjoyment. This is precisely what the difference between knowledge and enlightenment. Yogi is in the state of enlightenment, so he's not concerned about the knowledge. He may gravitate down. That is why Gurudev gravitated down to teach Bhagavad Gita. He was enlightened. Let us take another analogy to understand this. What is time and what is eternity? We know time. We all know time. And we also know infinite. What is infinite? That which doesn't end is infinite. But again, infinite is in relation with time. Short time. That which doesn't have limit is infinite. But when you say doesn't have limit, it also speaks of limit. Then eternity is different. Beyond infinite is eternity. Why? Because time and infinity both are within time. Time and infinity both are concepts of time. Eternity is beyond time. Similarly, knowledge is a limited construct. Enlightenment is beyond knowledge. And what is beyond knowledge? Knowledge per se, by itself. And such a person, yogi, who has reached this stage, will not come back in the samsara. Although he has praradha left, he will not come back into this prakruti or samsara. What are his chances of coming back in the samsara after becoming mukta? Taitariya Aranyaka has described it in a beautiful way. It is like andho mani, manim vindhyat, a blind person piercing the bid. Almost impossible. Tam anangulihi avayat, 
such a bead is being thrown into a a garland by a person who doesn't have fingers again further difficult agrivatam pratyam uchchat such a garland is put to a person who doesn't have a neck which is again difficult and ajivyaya abhyu abhya pujayat and such a garland after putting a person who doesn't have tongue is singing which is not possible how these four things are difficult that much is the impossibility of the yogi getting into the bondage of the samsara in this sutra the critical thing that we need to understand is knowledge is the product of mental limitation on pure consciousness when consciousness gets limited knowledge arises relation of knowledge and consciousness is like time and eternity eternity is not a time infinite but time transcended similarly consciousness is not knowledge of everything but knowledge transcended knowledge of everything is still an inferior state than knowledge transcended and that is why tataha krutarthanam parinam krama samaptir gunanam now comes the last ultimate philosophical concept before ending the patanjali yoga sutra this is directly taking a question in hand now that if the yogi knows that he is not prakruti that means guna because he has transcended gunas nistraigunyo bhava nistraigunyo bhava means he goes beyond the gunas agreed what happens to his guna or the guna itself so is it a situation where the gunas are there he is here and purusha is here is it technically three things separate from each other purusha prakruti and this yogi because you can either be purusha or prakruti there is no third entity in this world so where is the yogi has the yogi become purusha or yogi is still in gunas but not working in the gunas brahma vid brahma vid one who knows brahman one who knows purusha brahma eva bhavati becomes brahma only when this was told to us why it was not told to us that tadanantaram brahma bhavati ब्रह्म विद ब्रह्म एव भवति ब्रह्म एव इफ यू डू द विग्रह ब्रह्म इव भवति ब्रह्म इव ही इज लाइक द ब्राह्मण सो वेयर इज दिस थर्ड एंटिटी कमिंग नाउ ब्राह्मण इज ही ब्राह्मण देन ब्रह्म इव is his prakruti no he has gone out of prakruti where is his placement brahma vid brahma eva bhavati that is the reason why now you will understand patanjali maharaj said kaivalyam is nothing else but a state in which one is able to see prakruti separate than purusha 
that means to separately see the prakruti you have to go beyond the prakruti so the yogi has gone beyond the prakruti by which he is able to say that that is prakruti this is not prakruti that which is not prakruti is purusha now the moment when he says this is called kaivalyam according to sankhya so anyone who knows that what is anatma naturally as a logical corollary knows what is atman so anatma he knows atman he came to know automatically now he knows both so that is moksha or kaivalya now we have said that purusha or brahman is extremely akri a neutral it doesn't do anything then when avatar comes down who comes down when avatar takes place yada yada hi dharmasya fine shri krishna bhagwan came bhagwan shri ram came swami vivekan whatever they came as avatar we are not talking about krama mukti we are talking about directly the consciousness descending avatar but consciousness cannot descend consciousness cannot do anything because it has got no nothing it doesn't do anything perfectly that shukram shuddham anavaram asnavaram if it is so who takes the avatar because to take avatar you have to take the gunas that means prakruti and come in the prakruti the secret of the mystery of the avatar lies in this particular fact that the one which has transcended the prakruti and has become almost the brahman is able to come back again with the help of prakruti being fully established into a state where he is separate than the prakruti so avatar is nitya mukta they never get entangled there is no question of shri krishna bhagwan shri ram getting at all entangled into this prakruti because they came from a place which is beyond prakruti but they are able to take the prakruti for the sake of avatar because brahmev brahman per se cannot descend because it is nishkriya that is why the person who is sitting at a yogi or the at the place where he has gone beyond prakruti he looks towards the prakruti and says where is prakruti there is no prakruti at the place when he is at purusha level at atma gnan level maya is not exist so there is no maya there is no world there is no creation ajatavad gaudapad is speaking from this point from the point where he, the person has transcended the prakruti but if you are in the prakruti or maya it exists that is how those who are in guna in guna they will say gunas are there those who are transcended the guna they will say guna are not there then what happens to the guna of the yogi which has transcended second how the yogi who has transcended does he ever come back if he doesn't come back then who comes back as an avatar and will guna end sometime in the world in pralaya they don't end in srushti they come out in pralaya they go back but they are still there gunas are never destroyed 
sin, how long the gunas will continue to do what they are doing? All these questions is the last part of the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, which we'll see in the next session and hopefully we'll be done with the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. Hari Om. Om Purnamada Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om <coughs> Thank you, Sanjay ji. Sorry for what happened today. Uh, we'll wait for some questions. Hari Om, Sanjay ji. Uh, you have mentioned, and uh, now you have mentioned, I, what I understood in today's uh, class got a bit of confusion. Uh, when you mentioned Kaivalya stage, we are identifying uh, uh, the, the between Prakriti and Purusha. I mean, there are two stages becomes. So that becomes uh, Dui Sankhya Yoga, as you, as you mentioned. I mean, even I also understood that way. Uh, but we are we are uh, aiming to be merging with the pragadi. That means Advaitam. Uh, I think we are we are following the Advaitam, no, not the Sankhya philosophy, right? This is my confusion, sir. No, both are same or similar. We are not trying to be one with the prakriti. If you try to be one with prakriti, it is still below the stage and it is called as prakriti laya. It is one of the high state in concentration, but we are not trying to merge with the prakriti or to be one with prakriti. Going beyond prakriti, transcending the prakriti is the aim. For example, being somebody like I am myself now. So I have become with myself, I have become one. If I am able to go beyond me and then see me, that is the goal. So the whole process of Samadhi is to go upwards in identifying with the things that are there around identify, identify and expand and ultimately identify with the whole creation and then go beyond the identification. That is Kaivalya. Advaitam itself means Kaivalya. When you do not identify with anything or you identify all with you, there is no Dvaita, there is no second and that is possible only when the entire creation is transcended or the prakruti or the maya is transcended, then what you see is in the maya also you see the purusha or the consciousness or the atman. In the everything, non-prakruti also is atman, prakruti also is atman. So atman everywhere. Tukara Mara says, Bharala ghanadata hari dise. He says, rampant hari is seen by me everywhere. So this stage is the goal of Kaivalya. Now what is, what is Kaivalya? You identifying Prakruti and Purusha. When will you identify that? Only when you go beyond the Prakruti. If you are immersed in the water, you cannot say what is land. When you come out of the water, then you can say, this is water, this is land. Similarly, to come out of the Prakruti is nothing else but taking the entire yoga process. Yoga is nothing else but step-by-step -step approach to get out of the Prakruti, starting from Yama Niyama, Ashtanga Yoga, and reaching to the culmination of Sampradnyat Samadhi. A Sampradnat Samadhi is jumping over. Sampradnat Samadhi is 
climbing the staircase. Ashtanga yoga is crawling towards the staircase. Kriya yoga is climbing the staircase. Sampradnyat samadhi, climbing the higher sta steps. Asampradnyat samadhi, leaving the staircase and jumping beyond. Hari Om. Hari Om. Beyond comprehension. Excellent example of coming out of the water and identifying the land and water above we are standing. Absolutely. Absolute example. Thank you. Hari Om. Hari Om. Sanjayji. Gita says, Sarva Bhudani Kaunteya Pragardim Yandi Mamigam Kalpatshaye Kunastani Kalpadio Visrajamiaham Pragardim Swam Avastabia Visrajami Puna Punaha Guda Grama Mimam Krishnam Avasham Pragarde Vasat. Here the Pragardi is because of the help of Avasham Pragarde Vasat. That means Pragardi is. Helplessly, this is happening out of the nature of this prakriti. Yes. So there is a there is an element of helplessness there. Even Bhagavan agrees that. Yes, very true. And this particular shloka that you you narrated is the one that goes very close to Patanjali Yoga Sutra. The gunas or the prakriti shall continue to be there. Yeah. Will it end? Only for the person who transcended it will end, otherwise it will not end. When did it start? There is no answer for it. Anaditva. Yeah. It is Anadi, but not Ananta. This is what the Bhagavad Gita also says. And this is what, that is why we are in the next session, we will see what happens to the Gunas precisely from Yogi's point of view. From Bhagwan's point of view in this shloka, he said that I, Visruja, again, I call it by Anuloma Pratiloma of the Prakruti. I am doing it. Visarjan, I am doing. Creation, I am doing. But that is for the entire creation. That individual yogi, when he goes beyond gunas, then from his standpoint, what is happening to the gunas is what is the subject of next session. Are you? Are you? Are you? Do we have any more questions? One last one, uh, Sanjeeji. Uh, little confusion between, uh, uh, you know, Viveka, Gyati and Kaivalya. I mean, you explained the difference between knowing and uh, knowledge. So that is clear. But uh, maybe I misunderstood at both stages. I heard that they know the difference between Purusha and Prakriti. And, uh, you know, the assumption is that Kaivalya is one stage ahead of Viveka Gyati. So, little, little confusion there. Can you just explain, please? Difference at this stage, a person who is having a Viveka Gyati knows that this is Prakruti, right? This is Viveka Gyati. Viveka Gyati meaning knowing that this is Prakruti, naturally it presupposes that remaining is Purusha. So this is arriving at the stage of Viveka Khyati. But is it not the fact that he knows that he knows? He knows that he knows. That is also a problem. I have a Viveka Khyati also needs to be discarded. So he knows that he knows is dissolved. Then what remains? He knows. What? There is no what left. Knowing, but not knowing of or for. So the Viveka Khyati is the stage of the yogi at the end of the Sampradnath Samadhi when he knows that this is entirely Prakruti, the play of Guna, nothing else, everything discardable, he gets paravairagya, uh, but he is still left with the last strand. And that strand is, I know that this is Prakruti. Even this is an obstacle. This obstacle is lost in a sampratnyat or nirbija samadhi. Then there is no knowing left. 
there is no knowledge that this is prakriti that is purusha that is also gone if everything is gone then what is left only the knowledge is left why because chit samvit knowing is the nature of ultimate essence the gyan sat because it exists chit only knowing anandam why anandam it's a state what is anandam we don't know no but it is a sorrowless sorrow no 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 sorrow pain happiness is in prakruti because the state is enjoyable moment you say enjoyable prakruti then how is it it is by itself because there are no words the closest to words are brought satchit sukham satchit sukham if you say it is sat immediately the question comes what is asat and when there is sat and asat consciousness cannot be there why because it is propertyless it's a very difficult concept to fathom in the mind because it is something too huge for the intellect to understand it is to be experienced anubhuti paroksha gyan has limitations so vivek khyati is of the yogi is that he knows that he knows kaivalya is he is the knowledge that is the difference hari yog